welcome to Allen Digital Classes. Today we are going to discuss synergic bonding under coordination compounds. It's a very important subtopic for NEAT. First of all, let us find out what are ligands. Ligands are electron-rich species which act as Lewis bases or donors when we form complexes. And what is the central metal atom or ion? It is the electron pair acceptor. So ligands are the donors, the central metal atom or ions are the acceptors. And now, there are various types of ligands and the ligands are classified on various bases. On the basis of the charge, you can classify the ligands as negatively charged, positively charged and neutral ligands. Ligands can also be classified on the basis of their density, monodentate or unidentate, bidentate, tridentate and so on, till hexadentate ligands we study and we categorize all of them as polydentate ligands. But today we are discussing another basis of classification of these ligands in order to study synergic bonding. So, here we are going to classify the ligands on the basis of the electron pair donating and accepting tendency. Wait, electron pair donors are ligands. That's what we know so far. How can they have accepting tendencies? How can ligands accept electron pairs? Is what we are going to find out in our discussion. So let's go. And here we have ligands which are classified as classical ligands and non-classical ligands. Let us see what are classical ligands and non-classical ligands. This is the ligand which is acting as the donor. See the lone pair which is being donated to the central metal atom or it may be an ion as well. Here what we saw was the central metal atom or ion is donating back its electrons to the ligand. So here we come across the fact that ligand can show another kind of behavior where it can behave as electron pair acceptors as well. But what is the important condition do you think for its accepting behavior? It should have some vacant orbitals where it can accommodate electrons from the central metal atom or ion. Classical ligands. Classical ligands are the ones which have just one job. Just they behave as electron pair donors. So, the ligands which can donate only lone pairs in the vacant orbital of the central metal atom through coordinate bond. Which type of coordinate bond students? Sigma coordinate bonds. So classical ligands are the ones in which the ligands behave as electron pair donors. Not acceptors, okay? Only as electron pair donors they behave. Let's see examples of classical ligands then. Ammonia, water, F minus. These all ligands behave as electron pair donors. I'll give an example of a complex. Say for example, if I have Ni, NH3 whole 6, 2 plus ion, the vacant orbital of nickel 2 plus ion is accepting electron from the ammonia ligand. It's a neutral ligand where nitrogen is the donor atom. Fine. Let's continue with our discussion now. Next, let's go on to non-classical ligands. These are the ones which will show synergic bonding. These are the ones which are the main topic of our discussion in today's session. Okay. So, what are those ligands? They are the ligands which can donate the lone pair 
in the vacant orbital of the central metal atom or ion of course and at the same time it can accept electrons make a note of the students along with donating electron pairs to the vacant orbitals of the central metal atom or ion they are also accepting electrons into their students they should definitely have vacant orbitals for accepting these electrons so this is the second bond which will be formed already they have donated and the coordinate bond which is formed is sigma type now the second bond which will be formed is you know of course due to sideways overlap it will be a pi bond so the second bond which is formed is a pi type coordinate bond from the metal atom or ion to the vacant orbitals of the ligands okay so ligands are showing donor as well as acceptor tendencies both and hence this kind of bonding is known as synergic bonding these ligands as we know they are known as non classical ligands and along with that there are two new names for it let's try to understand what's the reason they are called as pi acceptor ligands because these ligands here are accepting electron pairs from the d orbitals of the central metal atom or ion that's the reason acceptor acid now just try to recollect the definition lewis acid Lewis acids are electron pair acceptors. So since the ligands are behaving as acceptors, you can call them as pi acceptor ligands or pi acid ligands. So instead of calling it Lewis acid, we are just using the term acid or acceptor. The kind of bond which is formed here is pi coordinate type. So they are known as pi acceptor ligands or pi acid ligands. And this back donation tendency, back donation, right? the central metal atom or ion was deficient and it required electrons from the ligands once it accepts electrons from the ligands what happens is it now gives back its electrons to the vacant orbitals of the ligands so an additional back bond is formed and this effect or this bonding is known as synergic bonding so students these are all examples of ligands which will have vacant pi star by the way abmo stands for anti bonding molecular orbital recollect and go back to mot molecular orbital theory bonding molecular orbitals anti bonding molecular orbitals sigma pi bonding molecular orbitals sigma star pi star anti bonding molecular orbitals so here these ligands will have vacant pi star anti bonding molecular orbital which will accept electrons from the d orbitals of the central metal atom or ion by the way these ligands they have vacant d orbital phosphorus okay will have vacant d orbitals for accepting electrons from the d orbitals of the central metal atom or ion fine now let's try to understand what are the kind of questions will be asked in neat from this topic and how does bond lengths or bond orders get influenced due to this back bonding or synergic bonding tendency yes so this is the filled orbitals of co which will your carbon is the donor by the way students so it will donate to the vacant orbital of the central metal atom or ion sigma type coordinate bond in addition there will be a pi type back bond or synergic bond formed from the metal to the ligand and that will be having a pi character the second bond double bond pi type coordinate bond let's have a look okay co giving a sigma type coordinate bond is forming after that now the metal back donates and forms an pi coordinate bond here so these are all these carbonyl complexes which show back bonding in them fine the same thing has been mentioned d orbitals of central metal atom or ion 
back donating it to the pi star anti-bonding molecular orbital of CO ligand. First sigma followed by the second bond which is back bond or pi bond. Now students, we have to understand this concept in this way. So C triple bond O, of course this is a coordinate bond from oxygen to C. Once formed it behaves like a normal covalent bond. So this carbon will back donate it to the, sorry, first the sigma bond will be formed from the ligand to the central metal atom or ion. A sigma type bond will be formed. Then, then what happens is, if back bonding occurs, so this is you can say before back bonding and after bonding, after back bonding what will happen? If there is a double bond here, students you have to satisfy the tetravalency of carbon, right? So between C and O, now what happens is? triple bond becomes double bond. So can we say that on the basis of this that if, okay let me write here after back bonding. So students what happens here is due to back bonding the CO bond strength triple to double you can clearly see the CO bond strength decreases. Bond strength is directly proportional to bond order we had learned from molecular orbital theory. So can we clearly see the CO bond strength decreasing and in turn CO bond order also decreases. Triple becomes double. Bond order decreases, bond strength decreases. Bond strength and bond length are inversely related to each other. So there will be an increase in bond length. So these are all the consequences of back bonding. And students what kind of central metal atom or ion would be willing to back bond more. Of course a richer one. So suppose if I have, yes, so suppose if I have here M in the plus 1 oxidation state, everyone knows CO is a neutral ligand, right? So M is plus 1 here, M is 0 here, M is minus 1 here. So greater the charge on M greater the charge on M, negative charge of course, I want more electrons to be on M. So more the number of electrons on M, greater will be the back bonding tendency, greater will be the decrease in the CO bond strength, CO bond order and hence due to extra back bonding in the last one, you will see the CO bond strength goes down, CO bond length increases. What happens to the MC bond strength? Let's see here once again. So this is a sigma type. After back bonding as I said it became a double bond. Due to back bonding, if the extent of back bonding is more, what happens is the MC bond strength increases. You can see single becoming double. I just wrote here CO. We have already explained this part hence. So the bond strength increases, the bond order increases, single becomes double, bond order increases, bond strength increases and hence since bond order and bond strength are directly related but it's inversely related to the bond length, so bond length will decrease. So let's take up this example and try to understand the point. So since I see that as I go across this left to right or here horizontally across this row, I see that the extent of back bonding increases because the charge on the central metal atom or ion or the number of electrons on it increases. So the extent of back bonding increases across as we move from left to right, you will see, okay, back donation increases as I mentioned. Electron, because electron density increases, the extent of synergic bonding increases. I would like to know from you what will happen if I go across from here to here on the MC bond length. 
एम सी बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ विल इंक्रीज एंड एम सी बॉन्ड लेंथ विल डिक्रीज नो स्टूडेंट बिकॉज अ सिंगल बॉन्ड विल हैव नो अ डबल बॉन्ड कैरेक्टर सिंगल विल बिकम डबल बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ विल इंक्रीज इफ बॉन्ड स्ट्रेंथ इंक्रीजेस एम सी बॉन्ड लेंथ विल डिक्रीज क्लियर फाइन लेट्स लुक इन टू दिस इलास्ट्रेशन tell me strongest co bond after this discussion can we conclude this that the co bond strength is inversely related to the extent of back bonding because back bonding decreases c triple bond o to c double bond o triple becomes double so when triple becomes double bond order decreases bond length increases bond order decreases means bond strength decreases so you have to find in the options in which case the extent of back bonding is minimum minimum back bonding maximum co strength so let's analyze this this is cr plus 1 v minus and fe 0 so the extent of back bonding goes this this one i mean 2 you can directly write 2 more than 3 more than 1 so you can expect minimum back bonding in the first option and hence the first option will have the strongest co bond in it okay everyone thank you very much